welcome to Happy Chick. Today is the day. We are gonna rack the cheap, sweet red wine, or the sweet, cheap red wine. I can't remember which way I've called it. I've called it both. <laughs> anyway, it's cheap, it's sweet, and it's red wine. So let's do this. <laughs> and then we're going to taste it. Because that's the most important thing, right? Tasting it. Is it good? Because it's cheap. Who knows? We'll find out. Hope you've collected your bottles. It's bottle time. <laughs> All right, let's get siphoning. Okay, so mm, I've got a can, a coffee can, just to raise up my red wine. It is gravity fed, the siphon is, so we need to have this higher than our pitcher. Um, so, let me show you this wine here for a second, though, because there's a couple things I want to discuss. If you're new to brewing, you're going to go, oh my God, what is this? Okay, there is, uh, if you can see me now, there's the wine. It's really, really dark red, but once we get it into like a sampling glass, you'll see it a lot better because it's so concentrated but there is this stuff at the top don't worry about that that is called a croissant line and it's important this is when you initially started brewing all the yeast started kind of foaming up and reacting to the sugar and the wine well the grape juice and it created this foamy kind of structure this is just the leftover when the foam started collapsing of the yeast it's okay the only thing i want to make mention is is once this is empty you do want to rinse this out and wash you know wash out the croissant line because if this dries it's going to be hard to get off especially if you've got a small necked demijohn those are almost impossible to get a, a bottle brush down onto the hips of that bottle. So as soon as you get this out, you want to rinse this and soak it with so hot soapy water and that should get it out. If there is still some bits in there that you can't get out and you can't get your hand in there just uh, to clean it out, get like a little scrubby, uh, like a green scrub, scrubby pad. Cut it small enough so that it'll fit down the neck Fill it with some hot soapy water and then shake it about and run it around and that should get the rest of it off. But if you rinse it off immediately after emptying the wine um, fermentation vessel, you shouldn't have a problem with that. But that is normal. There's nothing wrong with your wine, okay? The other thing is all the lease is on the bottom. With it being a dark wine, it's really hard to see. But once you get a good lighting, you'll be able to kind of see the different coloring levels. Um, so when you're siphoning, you don't want to put the siphon all the way down because then you're going to disturb the lees. And of course, it's going to get in our wine and then it'll be cloudy. And then your wine bottles will have a layer of sediment. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So. Uh, let's go ahead and raise this baby up mm. onto my coffee can. I'm going to bring my pitcher. This is what I'm going to uh, siphon into. Um, it's been sanitized, like I said. Let's take our lid off. Ugh. Um. <laughs> Just put it over here. Ooh, I got a whiff of that wine. Oh, it smells good. I think this is going to be a good one. Well, I've tried it before, so I know it's good. All right. So this is the auto siphon. The, um, it has some sanitizer water. It's okay if it has a little bit in there. It's not going to kill you. Okay, this goes into our pitcher. And this end goes into our wine, but I only want to go about halfway into the jug, and then I'm going to pump it, and it's going to start sucking the wine out. So let's see. Let's see if I can do this without spilling everything. Okay. 
So I'm done siphoning into the pitcher, and this is what's left over in the bottle. Now, you can see the Croissant line very easily. Now, can you, okay? And it's just a thin line of yeast, filmy stuff. But on the bottom is our leaves. See that solid pancake of red goop? And it's a little bit of wine. You don't always get a full gallon out because some of this, as you're siphoning it, may start kind of pulling up the leaves. And we don't want that in the wine. So you always do lose a little bit of wine. And it's just a given. Just accept it and move on. It is what it is. But you don't want this really in your wine because it makes it cloudy and uh, kind of grody looking. I mean, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but that's that's the bottom. That's the leaves. We don't want that in our wine if we can avoid it. So we're just going to go ahead and, rip, you know, swish it around to soften it up. And then we'll pour it down the sink, wash this baby up and let her dry and she'll be ready for another one. Let's go ahead and do a specific gravity reading. This will be the final one for this wine and we will compare it from the original specific gravity to this final one and we'll be able to calculate the approximate ABV on this wine. I'll be posting it right here once I've got it calculated. And I have my graduated cylinder and my hydrometer and of course the turkey baster so let's go ahead and get some wine in here all right let's see what we got here our starting our starting gravity was one point one, two, four. So let's see what our finishing gravity is. She's going to be on the sweet side. We were hoping for that. The final gravity is 1.032. So I'll put the um, approximate alcohol uh, right down here when uh, we're done. So let's go ahead and... Let's take her out. We don't need her anymore. I'm gonna pour some of this in this little sampling glass. Okay, now it's time to bottle. Um, if you've noticed, I've got some brown bottles here. They are the um, I've got some flip tops. I like flip top ones because I know that they'll seal very well. They're easy to open. I do have some that have, um, you know, th that can be corked. I've got some uh, old wine bottles. I've got some old whiskey bottles. My husband likes to drink some whiskey, so I've saved those. They've got, some of them are twist tops. Some of them have the little cork that you kind of, you know, pop in and out. Any of those bottles will work wonderful. Okay. So, I've got my siphon back. I just rinsed it out just in case there was any uh, leaves that were stuck in the piping and all that. I've got my bottling wand. Remember, this has that spring tip. Uh, that will open and close. It does stick, so you got to be kind of careful. I kind of got a cheapy one, but you know, <laughs> it still works. And we're going to put it on the uh, end of the siphon. And you, a quarter of an inch down the piping. That way it doesn't pop off on you mid bottling to about a half an inch. The older, uh, the more times that you put this on, the more it will stretch. And if you dip it in really hot water, the end of the, the tubing, it'll soften it up so it'll stretch a little bit more. I didn't do that because I didn't think about that until just now. All right, that's on pretty good. I think that'll be just fine. I'm going to do the clear bottle first so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to fast forward through the rest and then we'll come back. So, okay, get my coffee can back up here to raise the pitcher up. Start pumping. Okay, 
There we go. You can see that it's filling up. You do want to test the wand though every once in a while just to make sure that it is, you know, stopping on you. We want to fill it pretty high up. We want a very small head space. So once it gets up to almost this lip, I'm going to start lifting this up to see, you know, where we're at here. That's as much as I'm going to be able to get in this bottle. Just in case she starts leaking. <laughs> All right, we've got one wine bottle. We're going to close this up. I'm going to start filling the rest, and we'll be back as soon as I'm done, okay? All right, so after siphoning from the pitcher into the bottles, I ended up with three bottles, three whole bottles, and just enough for a sampling. Um... This is the clear bottle. You can kind of see it. It's still really dark. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a really dark. It is a little on the cloudy side, but once again, this is a very young wine. And it's only been, has it been three weeks or four weeks? Three weeks, I think. So there's probably still going to be some settling. I will have some uh, sediment on the bottom. It's okay. Just pour gently. Try not to disturb the, the, the bottom too much. Um, if you wanted to, you could um, rack it into another fermentation vessel, uh, put an airlock on it, and let it sit for a little bit longer, like a week or two, to finish you know, clearing out if you really wanted to. This is meant to be drank when it was when it's young it's not an aging wine although i'm sure it'll be just fine aged that's not the intention of this one it's to be you know short short young you know drink it fresh out of the bucket <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> anyway tasting wise how does it taste is it sweet is it too sweet is it you know let's find out so I've got a little sample here. I don't know if you can kind of see the clarity of it. I mean, it's, I would say it is cloudy. Um, but once again, like I just said, we just um, finished siphoning this, taking it off the leaves. And I probably did disturb some of it because it was really hard seeing the leaves. So I probably did disturb it. But that's okay. It's not going to hurt me at all. It has a, a distinct red wine smell. I don't smell, you know, like the original grape uh, juice smell. Um, I'm not that big on describing smell. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not a wine expert. I just know that I like drinking wine, so, you know. Um, I think this is going to be nice, though. Look. Let's give it a try and see what it tastes like. It smells good. Um, let's see. Mmm. It is not overly sweet for me. It is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. Um, the first time I made this, I thought it was a little too sweet. Um... But I think this one turned out quite nicely. Um, I, I don't know why it would be different. Well, it's been over a year since I made that one, so I might be not remembering correctly. Old age, you know. Uh, I think this is a really good starting wine. If you've never done this before, um, I think this is a wonderful idea. I think it's a fun, I think it's a fun experiment if you've never done wine before. I mean, we've got three bottles of wine, and I believe it was under $5 for the ingredients. 
Come on, you can't buy a bottle of wine for under $5. Well, you might, but I don't know if you're gonna enjoy it. This, I think you will enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you make this wine and let me know down in the comments what you think. You can make this out of the grape, uh, Welch's grape or like the, you know, the Concord grapes. Try it with the white grapes. Any of the juices that um, is bottled that does not have preservative, you can make this with. Let me know in the comments if you make this and tell me what you think. I would be curious to see what you say. I think you're gonna like this though. This is a good red sipping wine. I think I'm gonna have me a glass for dinner tonight. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next one. And get your bottles ready. We're going to be making some more wine. Have a great day. Bye. Mmm. glass. I didn't put any makeup on. Oh well. It is what it is. What are we doing today? Oh yeah. What was I gonna say?